If you've ever wanted to try frog gigging, but don't know where to begin, then this video is for you, as I'll be going over all the basics to help you get started. We'll go over frog gigging gear, tactics, and also how to clean and process your frog legs for the dinner table. Now this video is going to be substantially longer than the usual 3 minutes or so, but I hope you don't mind. One of the most common ways that people harvest frogs is with a gig. And uh, most people go out and gig under the cover of darkness at night. And so basically the way it works is you get a real bright flashlight and uh, kind of find where the frogs are at by scanning the shoreline. And once you get a bright light in that frog's face, it'll pretty well freeze and stay put uh, so you can move in with your gig and, uh, and gig them. And so I thought I'd kind of begin things here this evening by showing you um, just some of the basic tools that you'll need for a night of frog gigging. First and foremost, since you're going to be gigging, you're going to be needing a gig. I've got kind of a uh, custom frog gig rigged up here. I just got this big telescoping painter's pole. Uh, I got my little GoPro attachment on there. But uh, there's different types of gigs that you can get. A good buddy of mine, Teak Phillips, came up with this idea for the interchangeable uh, gig heads. This one here is actually for gigging fish, but I like these bigger gigs for bigger frogs. You get a little bit of a, a wider distance for striking at the frog there. But you can, you can actually get just an old uh, you know, dollar store paint roller and cut off the handle and attach the gig right to that. And then you've got interchangeable gig heads. So I've got a larger one here, and I've also got a smaller one if I get into some you know, smaller frogs. So, so you, you can get these frog gigs at most any, you know, Cabela's, Bass Pro Shops, your local uh, outdoor store. So I'm gonna need you a gig and a good pole for the your, uh, first thing you need. So get yourself a frog gig. Secondly, you're gonna be needing some trustworthy light sources. I like to have kind of a big heavy duty flashlight, you know, for uh, scanning the shorelines and uh, that I can see, you know, pretty long ways away, kind of scout out the area. I also like to have a headlamp just for kind of moving about, you know, and I'm not particularly ready to hunt yet, just kind of getting them to the, my main uh, frog gigging location. And I've got this little, uh, really bright, smaller one here that I'll attach to my gig head when I get it all, actually a little bit behind my gig head. I'll attach that, you know, a few feet away with some, just some black duct tape. So when I'm moving in uh, to get that frog, that extra light really helps them to stay put and kind of keeps them frozen. So uh, several different trustworthy light sources. Make sure you got fresh batteries in them. And uh, that's pretty much all you need for light. All right, a few other things we got here. I like to bring along my trustworthy fish club. After I gig a frog, if it hasn't dispatched him already, depending on where he gets gigged, I like to whap him on the head right away and just ethically dispatch the frog. And uh, after my frog is dispatched, I like to put them in a, you know, a plastic bag. I got my backpack cooler. I like to load this up with some ice. We're putting my frogs on the ice, keep them cool, and put you know, some cold beverages in there. It gets really hot and humid and miserable in these swamps at night. Speaking of that, sneaking around in the swamp at night, I'm going to have some trusty footwear. I got my tried and true Alaska Extra Tufts here. These are actually insulated, so they kind of get your feet sweaty, but you're going to be so hot and sweaty anyway, it really doesn't even matter. But you're going to be wading around in, you know, pretty, uh, pretty deep water, at least almost up to your knees, going after these frogs, and there's lots of snakes around and who knows what else. So really good to have some, you know, knee-high kind of muck boots for frog gigging. Let's see, I got my handy dandy GoPro. I'm not going to have a chance to film all the action tonight because I don't want to just be messing around filming when I'm trying to actually be hunting, but I will have this on my, uh, on my frog gig there to show you a little bit of the action when we get back later. Very, very importantly, you want to have some uh, insect repellent with DEET. Again, being out in a swamp, out in a frog's habitat, uh, there's lots of stagnant water, but there's going to be insect hatches and all kinds of biting bugs and annoying bugs all over the place. So you will get eaten alive if you don't have a good insect repellent. So very, very, very important. I think that's about it. So uh, let's go frog hunting. 
Again, the basic technique for frog gigging is to slowly and very carefully stalk the shorelines of a pond, a swamp, or any body of water that you know has a good population of frogs which is pretty easy to tell at night because you'll hear them croaking away with their signature deep sounding call. Now it's important to scan every inch of the area as you move along because these frogs can really blend in and sometimes all you'll see is their face sticking out of the thick cover. In fact, most of the frogs that I ended up getting this evening were right in front of me, but they were so well camouflaged that I almost passed them right by. So go super slow and careful. When you do spot a frog, keep your light right in his face to keep him still, and then move in slowly and get him with your gig. If the frog isn't dispatched by the actual gigging, I recommend giving them a quick whack on the head with a fish club to quickly and ethically kill them. After that, put them in your cooler or on your stringer, and then go look for another one. All right, well, made it back in. It's about one o'clock in the morning, covered in sweat, mosquito bites. Uh, the night got off to kind of a slow start, but things did eventually pick up, and I uh, got four nice-sized frogs, and uh, now it's time to clean them. Okay, so we're going to clean a pretty good sized frog here. Step number one is to make a cut right across the back. Okay. Step number two is get yourself a pair of skinning pliers of some kind. The pliers will cooperate. Here we go. Just pull them right off there. Like so. Next thing you want to do is cut off the legs. Different ways you can do this. I'm going to use a pair of Tin snips here, which work pretty good. So cutting those off. Right above the hip bones. And just cut that off of there. Careful not to get all its guts and stuff everywhere. Get rid of that. Okay, now what I like to do after I get stuff cut is to put it in some salt water. Get them all good and cleaned up and then we're ready to cook them. Okay, I left my frog legs soak in some salt water overnight. Now I'm going to simply bread them with some of my favorite uh, golden fish batter from Andes and just fry them like fish and that's all there is to it. Real simple way to make frog legs. Okay, I got a nice thick batter. I'm gonna let them kind of sit in there for a little bit. And I'm just gonna kind of make sure they got a nice even coat. Throw them in some oil. Again, fry them up. And that's it. Enjoy. And a little bit of cayenne pepper, give them extra spice. Okay, put them on, just drain them on some thick towels. When they're done. There you have it, my friends. That's how to hunt, process, and cook frogs. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to this channel and check out the 3 Minutes Outdoors website at 3minutesoutdoors.com.